Welcome to class, everyone. Thank you, Rubega, Jafina, Naila, Zelatoli, and Georgia for joining class. We'll begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask one of you to please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Anyone can lead us in prayer? Nobody wants to pray? Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is living and active and powerful. Your word encourages strength, builds us up. Your word is life, God. And we thank you for this most precious gift that you have given to us. We thank you for your divine revelation to people We've written so that we can be strengthened, we can be guided, we can be led, we can have an understanding about who you are, your nature and your ways, Father. And even as we look into your word, we pray that you would open our eyes, open our ears, help us to perceive and discern and understand. And God, we pray that uh, we will not just know your revelations, know your truth, but your truth will empower us, will help us to live lives that are fruitful, that will enhance and build your kingdom, and God, that we can be your mighty people here on earth. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we um, are looking at the introduction to uh, the book of Romans, and um, we stopped at a few key highlights last time. Uh, so the first key highlight for the book of Romans is that it's a book where the gospel is uh, mentioned in much detail. Uh, talks about how we are sinners, how Christ died for us, he rose again, uh, and those who believe in him will receive forgiveness of their uh, sins. So it's this is one of the episodes where, you know, the gospel is given to us in, in the clearest, in a detailed way. Another key highlight of the book of Romans is that, you know, um, uh, our full spiritual journey is uh, described here very beautifully. And we looked at it in, de in detail um, uh, uh, last class. Uh, each chapter, what is the detail of the spiritual journey that Paul outlines for us. Um, the third key highlight where we stopped was that, you know, it uh, the, the book of Romans reveals the righteousness of uh, God, okay? We know that God is right. Uh, he's just. He's right and just in everything that he does, he says, um, and, uh, you know, he can never be wrong in what he does, cannot do anything that is evil, because basically righteousness is a moral attribute of God. It is who he is uh, in himself. So he does not have to follow certain rules and regulations outside him, but he is the standard. His, his very uh, self, who he is, you know. Uh, is sets the standard for uh, for morality, for what is right, and uh, for justice. So God is righteous. Okay, um, and a major theme that runs throughout the book of Romans is righteousness. Uh, this word righteousness is used thirty six times throughout this book, and we see that uh, Paul talks about God being righteousness in judging sin. Uh, God is righteous when he forgives um, uh, sin on the basis of Christ's atoning work. Uh, God is also righteous in imparting his righteousness to uh, uh, believers. So we look at that in detail in Romans chapter 5, how we are made righteous, not because of who we are or not because of our works, but uh, Christ's righteousness has been imputed upon us, which means Christ's righteousness has been put into our account, so to say, or we are clothed with Christ's righteousness. Uh, we look at that in Romans chapter 5. And we also 
uh, he also talks about a believer walking in the righteousness uh, and uh, empowered by the spirit in Romans chapter 6 to verse to chapter 8 and then in verse chapters 12 to 15 he talks about the believer living a righteous um, life so the way uh, the whole topic of righteousness uh, has been treated or has been imparted to us in this book we find it in no other uh, book in the bible excepting here in the book of uh, romans uh, another key highlight um, in the book of romans is you know that uh, we see how both the jews and the gentiles have been uh, chosen by God. So in Romans chapters 9 to 11, you know, Paul addresses the relationship between the Jews and the Gentiles, um, or he's talking about Israel and the church and what God is doing uh, with the church, what God is doing with the Jewish nation, what God is doing with the people of Israel. Where is Israel and the church fit in in what God is doing in the present scenario, in the present time and uh, season? And again, we don't see this addressed uh, in such detailed manner, in such specific manner, uh, or this, uh, treat, uh, this you know, subject is not treated anywhere else in the New Testament of both Jews and Gentiles like it is being treated or addressed here in the book of uh, Romans. So it is. Uh, this is an interesting uh, part of the study of the book of uh, Romans. So these are some of the key highlights um, of this book. Now we look at um, why Paul wrote to the believers at Rome. Okay, what was his need uh, to write to the believers at Rome? Now we we know that Paul had never gone to Rome. He had never gone and seen the churches there, which means he has never established the churches there. So he has uh, no spiritual oversight or responsibilities um, uh, for the individuals or the churches there because he has not founded uh, the churches. He was not directly connected with the church uh, at Rome or the churches, the house churches at Rome. Uh, but we see, uh, in spite of that, Paul is writing to them. Uh, and these two epistles, the epistles of uh, uh, Colossians and Romans, Colossians, which Paul is writing to the church at Colossae, and this epistle of Romans, which he's writing to the church at Rome, are only two exceptions where he has, Paul has not been directly connected uh, with the uh, church. Okay. So, um, but in spite of that, you know, um, um, we see that Paul has a connection with the church at Colossae and with the church at Rome, uh, which came through people in leadership in these churches. Okay, so um, how did he have a connection with the church at Colossae? For which reason he's writing the book of uh, Colossians or the epistle of Colossians is because, uh, you know, he had a personal uh, relationship or basically he would have mentored or trained or he would have, uh, you know, uh, let these people who are leaders in these churches at Colossae and at Rome uh, to the saving knowledge of the grace of Jesus Christ. So we see that, you know, um, those who ministered at the church at Colossae, Paul had a strong personal relationship with Philemon. Uh, who lived in Colossae and who a church met at his uh, home. Also, he, Paul, had a strong relationship with Epaphras, uh, who was from Colossae. Uh, we read about Epaphras in Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, uh, chapter 4, verses 12 to 13, and Philemon chapter 1, verse 23. And uh, Paul also led a runaway slave called Onesimus, um, a slave of Philemon. Uh, so Onesimus ran away from Philemon, landed up in Rome, uh, and somehow got in touch with uh, Paul when he was in house imprisonment. And, um, you know, Paul led uh, Philemon to the Lord. And so we see that, you know, um, uh, 
uh, we will study about this book, I think, in the next semester, and um, how he wants to send back Onesimus, and so he writes um, uh, the letter of, of Philemon. So, you know, he has a personal connect with all of these people, and uh, so that's why he writes these uh, episodes, or he writes these letters uh, to them. So similarly, you know, how does Paul have um, uh, a relationship with the people of the Church of Rome? Uh, we looked at uh, in the last class that, you know, he heard much about the churches at Rome through the, to whom? Who are the people he heard about the church at Rome? Aquila and Priscilla, yes. Okay, who he worked with at Corinth. Um, and also possibly, you know, he would have met other believers from Rome. And so he's heard about the people, the church at Rome, the churches at Rome, their faith, how they're growing. And so he feels uh, he has this personal connection with these people and hence he writes uh, these epistles to uh, them. So we look at... Um, you know, uh, some of the things uh, or some of the reasons why he writes this letter. It's um, uh, uh, one is, you know, he has a personal connection with few people who are leaders in the churches. The second thing is his passion uh, that, you know, he has for these churches uh, and that he has been praying um, uh, for them. So, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, Paul has been passionately praying for them. Uh, we read this in Colossians chapter one, verses uh, chapter one, three, verses three and four, and verse nine. Colossians chapter two, verses one to five, and Romans chapter one, uh, verses eight to um, ten. Okay, uh, look at Romans chapter one, verses eight to fifteen. Uh, can somebody read that, please? Romans chapter one, verses eight to fifteen. Can somebody read that loudly for us? Romans chapter 1, verses 8 to 15. Romans chapter 1, <clears throat> verses Rosalind 8 to 15. We... Sorry. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Rosie. Verse, verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by some means, now at least I may find a way in the will of God to come to you, for I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise, so as much is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Thank you, Roslyn. So here we see that in verse 9, uh, Paul says that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. That means he's always praying for the church at Rome, he does not stop without ceasing. So that is another reason why he is writing to them because he has been passionately uh, praying for them. Uh, another reason is he desires to minister to them in part and also fellowship with uh, them. Look at what he says in Romans chapter uh, 1, verse 11. He says, I long to see you. And the same verse, he says, I long to impart to you some spiritual uh, gift. And verse 15, he says, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in uh, Rome. Okay. And uh, he also longs to uh, fellowship with them. He says in verse 12, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and 
me. So he, you know, he just longs to uh, uh, be with them. He longs to uh, fellowship with them. He also makes this known in Romans chapter 15. We read this last class. In Romans chapter 15, he says in verse 24, he says that I may enjoy your company for a while. He also says in verse 23 that, you know, his he has his great desire these last so many years to come to you, to be part of you, uh, you know, to fellowship uh, with you. We also see in Romans chapter 15 that he desires to minister uh, to them. He says, you know, that I may come to you in verse 29. He says that I come to you that I shall come uh, uh, in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he says that, you know, um, and I come to you with joy, verse 32, by the will of God and may be refreshed to go together with you. So he's writing this, he's making known his desire to minister to them, to impart to them, and his longing and his desire just to be with them and just to uh, fellowship with them. Okay, so that is the third reason that uh, he is writing. The first one is because he has some connect with those in leadership. The second thing is because he's been praying passionately for them. The third thing is because he desires to minister and impart and also have fellowship with them. And also there are other reasons why Paul is writing to the believers. Um, in, in verse 11 that was read to us, it says, for I long to see you. So he's having this long uh, desire, long-standing desire of uh, basically seeing them, fellowshipping them, uh, ministering to them. Also, he wants to, uh, he's also writing this letter because he wants to make known to them that he's heard about their faith. Okay, so maybe the church at Rome uh, very strong in their faith. Why do you think Paul is mentioning about their faith? What is the characteristic of their faith? Why do you think he's talking about and saying that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world? Why do you think that he mentions it? I mean, I'm sure he's not just saying it for the sake of saying it. You know, Paul is not a man who just flatters people. You know, why do you think he's saying this? From what we look at the background, any idea? Think of why Aquila and Priscilla left Rome and went to Corinth. Why did they go? Hello, all of you were present in my class, our first class. Everyone there? Knock, knock. Who's there? Why is their faith spoken of? Okay, so Bashi says yes. <laughs> okay. Why is their faith spoken of throughout the world? The reason could be because they went through such persecution, such difficulties, you know, under Emperor Claudius and Nero and all of that. And they stood on to their faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, so that is how, you know, their faith has been spoken of throughout the whole um, world. So he says that, you know, I've heard about your faith, possibly from Aquila and Priscilla and from the others as um, well. Okay. Uh, and also, we see that, you know, um, Paul desires to preach the gospel. He's very passionate about preaching the gospel about Jesus Christ. And he's also passionate and desires to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people at Rome. And we see this in Romans chapter 15, which was read to us. He says, so as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. And also we uh, read this in Romans chapter 15, verse 29. He says, but I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we know that Paul is so passionate about preaching the gospel. He he does not waste any opportunity. He longs, he waits for the opportunity to preach the gospel of uh, Jesus Christ. Okay. And also we see that, uh, you know, it is, uh, he's 
he's preparing himself to visit them so that he can impart spiritual truths to the believers. We read that, uh, you know, and so writing this epistle is like a precursor or like a foundation to what he is going to impart to them. So it's like, uh, hey, this is all the things that I want to say to you, and I'm writing this to you, but more is yet to, to come when I meet you uh, personally. Okay, so this is basically something like a precursor foundation to what more he wants to spiritually impart into their uh, lives. And also, like I said, he wants to enjoy their company. He wants to be refreshed spiritually. Verse 32 says, you know, so that I can be refreshed together with you and also, you know, to enjoy their fellowship. And um, he also wants to be helped on his journey to Spain. So he's making that known. Uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 24. Uh, he says, Where, wherever I journey to, whenever I journey to Spain, I shall come to you, for I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you. Uh, first, I may enjoy your company for a while. So he wants to enjoy their company, their fellowship, their hospitality. And also he's looking for some kind of help that uh, he can be helped on his journey uh, to Spain, okay? So these are some of the things why Paul is writing his uh, letter to the church at um, Rome, okay? Uh, some things to keep in mind uh, when we are uh, basically studying this episode to the Romans. Um, you know, uh, we know that all scripture is given by the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the uh, Holy Spirit, all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we know that Paul has received everything that he's writing about through the revelation from Jesus Christ. So whatever he's teaching and preaching is basically uh, he's receiving it as a revelation. But uh, not only in this letter, but all his episodes that he's writing. But, you know, we also need to keep in mind that even though it's a revelation that he's receiving, uh, he's using his own style, his own presentation skills, his own culture, his own mindset uh, to write. So he's writing it from his own uh, style, the way he presents it, he's writing that. And we also need to keep in mind that Paul, uh, you know, was a scholar. He was highly intellectual. He was well read, well trained, well thought. Um, uh, you know, and he studied under great uh, preachers and teachers. One of them is Gamaliel. Um, and so we see that there was, yes, you know, divine inspiration from Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And also, he comes from a good, solid um, uh, learning background, information. Uh, intellectual training and knowledge that he has received. So he brings in uh, this revelation, uh, you know, combined with sound, logical understanding and reasoning. And if you look at Paul's letter to the Romans, uh, you know, it's a powerful book. And you can also see how beautifully Paul, uh, very beautifully, logically, he presents the truths, he reasons with the Jews, and it's very interesting and very um, nice. And he uses a lot of Old Testament um, content because, you know, he's so well read, so well thought in the Old Testament, and he brings it out so beautifully and so interestingly. Okay. Um, so Romans is uh, the book of Romans, the epistle of Romans, very scholarly. And it's like you're actually chewing on something very scholarly. Uh, and there's a lot of logic and reasoning that is there in every chapter. So that makes it more interesting for us to study this um, book. Okay, And in this book, we also see a lot of references to the Old Testament. There's always going back to the Old Testament. Um, a lot of reference from Old Testament scripture or concepts from uh, uh, the Old Testament. And we know that Paul was well read in the Torah, the Old Testament. He was a scholar in the Old Testament scripture. So as he's writing here by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's also bringing out things from the Old Testament. And why is he talking so much about the Old Testament here in the book of Romans? Any 
idea? You reveal? How is Christ revealed in the Old Testament? Okay. Why do you think Paul is bringing about so much of Old Testament scripture here in the book of Romans? Yes, excellent. Thank you, Jeffina. You know, uh, yes, Lubega. Yes, go ahead, Lubega. You can unmute your mic and speak. I was saying that uh, it is practically because he wants to show us that there is a difference between Christ and uh, and the Moses or Adam and the, and, and the Christ to show us that uh, the other one was uh, it is Moses basically it is uh, the other one was by law and this one is by faith I think that is it sir teacher thank you okay thank you Lobega yes he's talking about law and faith yes also he talks about um, how because righteousness is the main theme in the book of Romans so he talks about you know their great forefather Abraham the patriarch and how Abraham was justified not by the uh, the covenant of circumcision but by righteous he was already declared righteous um, by faith and not through uh, you know the covenant of circumcision um, but exactly why is he talking about more of Old Testament here is because he's talking he's addressing to the Jews you know, and he's also talking about Israel and the church. Remember, I said that uh, the whole of Old Testament, you know, just was focusing on the Israelites. Suddenly, in the New Testament, you know, the whole nation of Israel is kind of forgotten. It's no longer there in the picture, and we see that so much in the Book of Romans. So, where is Israel in this whole, you know, um, uh, uh, picture of what God is doing now at the present? Um, and the Jews, you know, um, so he's talking to uh, to the Jews basically, and so he is um, you know, bringing a lot of Old Testament scripture and helping the New Testament believers or the people who are on this side of the cross, helping us to understanding to understand the meaning of all the things that was revealed to us in the Old Testament. So the Holy Spirit is bringing out things from the Old Testament and helping us as New Testament believers or people who are on this side of the cross, helping us to understand all of those meanings or revelations in the uh, Old Testament. So, you know, we have a lot of references to the Old Testament scripture. And also, you know, um, another reason, uh, to, uh, another key thing to keep in mind when studying uh, the book of Romans is the local context. Uh, the church at Rome comprised of both the Jews and the Gentile believers. Now, the Jewish believers were thinking, okay, we have accepted Jesus, we have embraced Christianity, now what about Judaism? Okay, or what about the nation of Israel? Because they belong to the nation of Israel, you know, and they they thought. They had the covenants, they had the laws, they had the prophets, they had the forefathers, everything was given to them, you know. Uh, now, what about Israel? And the Gentile believers were saying, hey, we have accepted Jesus Christ, we are part of the church now, you know, uh, what about the Jewish brothers? Have we, are we become part of Judaism? Where are we in this whole equation, okay, or where are we in this whole relationship? So Paul is basically addressing, you know, um, both these group of people, the Jews and the Gentiles or the Israelites and the church. And he's uh, helping them address that the Christ, about the Christian faith and helping them to grow together in the Christian faith or being part of the church. Okay. Another thing that we need to keep in mind as we study the book of Romans, that it is a single letter. It is one long continuous letter, but uh, you know, uh, and it's not chapter and verse, but this chapter and verse is made for our convenience, for our reference. But if you look at it, it's just one continuous development of one letter of one thought and revelation that has been uh, given to Paul. 
So when we are trying to understand what Paul is writing or revealing or is teaching, or when he's talking about certain doctrines, uh, we need to uh, keep in mind or look at it as a forward look and as a backward look. Okay, I'll explain what this forward look and backward look is. So basically, when we are starting from chapter 1, verse 1, and going through chapter 1, we need to go also have a forward look. That means we need to go ahead in, in the few chapters or what Paul is writing later on in his letter about the same concept, about the same doctrine, or about the same teaching which he's mentioned uh, here. So maybe he's talking about sin here, but he talks about it, um, it, 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 it just begins to talk about it, but he later on develops upon it, maybe in chapter 3, then goes on to chapter 6. So maybe we need to have a forward look. We will go ahead and Pastor, see what you're more. not audible. Is that only me or everyone? Not audible. What about no, the no, others? We can hear. We can hear. Thank you. Can Subhashi. anyone hear, Pastor? Yes, Subhashi says he can hear me. I can't hear, Pastor. Okay, Subhashi says he can hear me. What about the others? No, Pastor, I can't hear you. Yeah, I can hear. Okay, Zelutoli also says she can hear me. You sound unclear on my side. Okay, Lubega says I. And clear. Maybe there's something about the. Okay, there are two students who says they can't hear me clearly. Two of them who say they can hear. Can you just ask Abhinash to connect and just uh, see if we can? No audio, but Zelatoli. I better type it for her. Um, Just connect and see if you can hear me, please. Okay, I think uh, Okay, we'll continue. Um, so we need to have a, f a forward look, which means we need to, you know, uh, look uh, on what have Paul has explained detailed, uh, explained in detail uh, later on in his letter or in the other chapters. So while interpreting something in an earlier chapter, we also need to look at, you know, the forward look. Uh, what he has developed into, or so that we can stay aligned. To the intent of um, what he's trying to explain to us, the truth he's trying to present to us, so that we don't misread, we don't, um, you know, misinterpret, uh, and we don't go away from what he is explaining to us. So we will have we'll have the forward look, and then similarly, when interpreting something in the later chapters, we will need to have a backward look, which means we will need to go back and look at what Paul has already interpreted or what he has, um, uh, uh, you know, he's explained to us what he's already stated on the subject uh, previously, you know, uh, and if we don't have this forward and backward look, then there is a possibility of us, you know, taking these verses uh, in isolation, misinterpreting it, 
uh, out of context, out of meaning, out of what Paul really intends to say or has said about it. Um, and, uh, you know, we would lose the whole um, uh, deeper meaning or the deeper significance of what he is writing. So even as we study this, um, you know, we would um, look at, um, uh, you know, the forward and the backward look. Okay. Now, what do we expect through the study of uh, Romans? Okay, uh, we would expect to have a clearer understanding of the gospel. We will we will be able to grasp uh, the whole gospel, uh, what it's saying truly in its fullest sense, and uh, what is the significance of it in our own uh, lives. So I said that you know in this uh, uh, epistle, Paul mentions how we are all sinners, how Christ died for us, how we rose again, and whoever believes in him receive forgiveness of their um, sin. So we'll have a clearer understanding of the gospel and also how uh, it's, what significance it has in our lives. Okay. Another thing that we can expect through the study of uh, Romans is um, a revelation of life transforming truths. Okay. So even as we delve into the book of Romans, uh, we will receive um, or we will encounter profound truths that has the power to transform our lives. Um, basically, the teachings or the doctrines of grace, righteousness, the power of the cross, the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, even as we study these doctrines, study these truths, uh, it has the power to bring significant uh, changes in our mindset, in our perspective, in our thinking, and also in our be behavior as a believer. Okay, um, We will also learn uh, what it means to be uh, uh, you know, recipients of uh, this abundant grace of God, uh, the, his righteousness and how this will transform our relationship with uh, God. Okay, we will learn how to walk free from sin, uh, how sin has no longer dominion and power over us. We will learn how to walk in the spirit, uh, how to uh, you know overcome the dictates of our flesh or not given to the uh, flesh. We will also learn about. Uh, uh, the immeasurable love of God, that nothing can separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We will also learn how to live our everyday lives as believers um, and how our relationship is affected by our per this personal transformation that we receive through uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, So in this book of Romans, yes, there is a lot of doctrines that we will study and there are also teachings but these teachings which Paul gives us in Romans will be life-changing, will be life-transforming, uh, okay? So the whole purpose is to bring about this transformation and this transformation will happen as we study, sorry, the book of uh, Romans, okay? This book also, uh, you know, uh, brings about a personal transformation uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so like we said, the revelations, the insights that we read here is basically, you know, what has been imparted by the Holy Spirit to the Apostle Paul. So the revelation and insights you gain from study Romans will not just be mere intellectual knowledge, but will be accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what is going to bring transformation in our Life. So the Spirit of God will use these truths that we learn to bring about personal transformation, personal growth in our own uh, lives. Okay. So yes, Paul's teaching in Romans goes beyond mere intellectual knowledge, um, uh, but it carries, uh, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit to bring about transformation in the lives of those who study it, those who read it. Um, so the purpose of this book is not merely to impart information, but it's basically to lead believers into a deeper understanding about God's plan of redemption. And this whole plan of redemption that we will be studying in detail 
will become an experience that is life changing, even as we encounter the truths in this um, episode. Okay, so even as we understand and apply the teachings of um, the book, this uh, what we study in the book of Romans, uh, believers will be encouraged to live in alignment with God's purpose. Uh, we would also be encouraged to uh, to walk and to live in righteousness and also experience a deeper intimacy with uh, God. Okay. Now, the transformation occurs even as the Holy Spirit uh, illuminates the truths that are found in this book. And, uh, you know, these truths will empower individuals to live out their faith in a way that brings glory and honor and praise to God. Okay. So what we are basically saying in essence is that, you know, this book of Romans or this epistle of Romans not only is a um, theological masterpiece, you know, but it also guides us um, into spiritual growth. Uh, it's also um, a catalyst for personal uh, transformation. Uh, it encourages believers to embrace the love of God, the grace of God, to submit to his lordship and to live our lives out of, uh, you know, what uh, the gospel was meant to bring about in our daily lives. Okay. So even as we go through the study, I'd like you to just soak in it, you know, and also just apply it in your own um, lives. Okay. So that is the introduction to the book of Romans. Anyone has any questions? Any questions about the introduction? Anything that you'd like to say? Anything that you'd like to ask? Yes. Okay. Uh, Jeffina wants me to explain uh, the forward look and the uh, backward look. So the forward look, you understood, right? Uh, you know, even as we start studying the book of Romans, there are some things that Paul would have uh, elaborated uh, as he writes his letter. So for us to understand those truths in the beginning of his letter, we might have to look at some of what he has explained in detail uh, later on on how he is built on it later on so that we can... Uh, uh, you know, interpreted in context, in the holistic way, uh, and not misinterpreted, and stay aligned to what his thought is, or what he intends to reveal to us, to write to us, or the truth that he is trying to present to us. Similarly, even as we go on in his letter, reading his letter, studying his letter, we need to maintain a backward look, which means we need to look back to see what he has already stated about this subject previously, what he's already mentioned about it, so that we are consistent in what um, he is telling us. We don't uh, take out these verses in isolation, interpret it in isolation, but we interpret it in the whole context, in the whole book of what, uh, in the whole way that he is uh, writing to us. So some doctrines you would have started off in chapter one he or chapter three he will build it on in chapter six you know so we need to have this uh, backward look where we go back and see what he's already spoken about and then based on that how we can interpret or based on that how we can understand uh, you know what he is talking about in the later uh, part of his lit or the latter part of his lit yes okay anyone else has any questions Any thoughts you'd like to share about the book of Romans? Okay, before we look at chapter one, I would just like to ask all of you to share, you know, uh, if you've read the book of Romans before, or, uh, you know, what has really impacted you? Uh, what has, or you've listened to a message or a sermon or you preach something, what is something that has been deeply ingrained in your mind um, about the book of Romans? Or if you've not studied the book of Romans, why haven't you studied the book of Romans? 
Any anyone uh, please go ahead and share. If you studied the book of Romans, what did you like? If you listened to the you know uh, sermons or if you just talk about the book of Romans, what is that one thing that comes to your mind? Or if you have not read it, why haven't you studied or read it? Ma'am. Yes, please. Yeah. When I think about Book of Romans, uh, chapter 8, verse 26 is what struck me for the first time when I uh, heard, when I read this and heard a sermon also on this. So this is a scripture that really blessed me and my prayer life. Mm -hmm. But Thank likewise, you. the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So this is the scripture that really blessed my prayer life. Thank you. Thank you, Roslyn. Thank you so much for sharing. Anyone else? Anyone else likes to share about performance if you've not studied it or you've not you know read that why yes go ahead Jeffina. Um, i think it's better if you it would be better if you mute your mic so it oh, okay. yeah so uh i think this romans chapter is eight or the uh, uh someone said before uh, also something that i keep reading again and again and again as far as it's there i think and the roman talks about life in the spirit i am not sure when like which passage so i kind of read romans very often in my life uh the very first book that i was touched by was romans i remember when i was I mean, even before I got saved, I remember there was a pastor who thought about the whole Romans, like chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And my mom used to play that sermon again and again at home. But I was not really into Christ then, but I felt uh, some, I still remember some preaching from there. And I also remember studying this book very sincerely. I felt like it explains the gospel like fully, like the cross uh, and kind of helps us understand really who Jesus is than the other things. Uh, there are other instructions in all the other letters, but I felt like Roman is a package of gospel. Like you can really understand like what Jesus did, what has been done on the cross. And that helps us, help me to understand other gospels also in a better way, uh, gospels and letters. The whole New Testament, after reading Romans, I felt like the revelation of the other books are better now because Romans have made that foundation for me in my life. So, yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jeffina. I think you should teach them about Romans. <laughs> you can just see that excitement on your face. Um, yeah, Romans chapter 8 uh, talks about, um, you know, verse 12, 13, talks about, uh, you know, life in the spirit, life in the flesh. Yes. Anyone else likes to share? I think one of the scripture passages for many, uh, uh, favorite scripture passages for many is Romans chapter 8. This Romans chapter 8 is one of my favorite scripture passage other than Psalm 139. And to be honest, uh, when I was uh, in my younger days, the youth days, I never used to read the book of Romans because I found it very difficult to understand. Okay. But it's uh, it's a powerful uh, letter, yes. Anyone else likes to share? Okay, time is up. We'll um, uh, we'll begin Romans chapter one uh, next uh, class. Uh, I think it's on Monday, right? So we look at Romans chapter one. Please read Romans chapter one and come so that you can share your inputs. You know, uh, just this weekend, you can read Romans chapter one. When we come, you know, you can share what really uh, struck you. You receive the Rama word, some truths that was highlighted. Uh, we can begin uh, with all of us sharing. And I like 
you know, class participation, it will be more interesting. Otherwise, if I do the talking, it will be boring. Okay. So let's do that small homework and come ready for uh, Monday. Thank you all. Have a blessed weekend, a refreshing weekend, and see you all on Monday. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rosalind. Thank you, Pastor.